So we are on Tes Vav Ahmed Base, which is uh, um, 15b at the bottom. And the Gemara is in the midst of asking a contradiction between the Mishnayis and Tamid and um, the, the um, Mishnah and Midos and to figure out the, um, the answer to this contradiction. We have in the Beis HaMikdash itself, we have uh, um, the upper floor chambers that existed on the um, uh, on the uh, al along the perimeter of the walls, and on the north side of the Beis Hamikdash, there was a chamber on the upper floor called the Beis Hamotet, and the Beis Hamotet had four chambers coming off of or four rooms coming off of it. So the base of had a big fire and it kept it kept everybody warm. And uh, there were four chambers coming off of it. And the contradiction is in what were in these chambers. What we learned yesterday was that the Mishnah and Tamid said that in the northwestern side, there was the Lishkas of Tulayim, that's where the lambs were. And uh, going counterclockwise, the uh, um, Second room had the Lishkas Hachaisamas, which was the signet seals that people would then get a sign uh, when they would pay, they would get a, a, a stamp and take that to receive the amount of uh, flour or meal offering or burrs, whatever their carbon was. And the uh, south, uh, the southeastern side in the corner was the Lishkas Beis HaMoket, which had a smaller fire and maybe where they kept some of the uh, materials for the fire. And then in, in the northeastern corner, that's where they had the Lechem HaPanim was being made. So that's what it said in the Mishnah, it says in the Mishnah Tamil. And what we will see is the Mishnah in Midos has a different count. Veraminu, and we have a contradiction, there's a fifth to last line of Tes Vav Ahmed Beis 15b. Veraminu, we have a contradiction. It says in Midos, in the, in the Mishnah in, me, in Measurements, Arba Lishka is Hayla Beis HaMoket. There were four rooms, bureaus, coming off of the uh, Beis HaMoket. Kiketunia is Apsuchas Latraklin. Like small antechambers uh, going into a larger room. Shtayim Mekodesh, Shtayim Mechol. Now, as we, uh, as we saw in the... In the um, imagery it was the, this was on the upper floor and it was in the wall of the upper floor half of it was in the kodesh over the courtyard of the base of mikdash and half of it was in the hole over the stairs and elevation coming up from the harabais from the temple mount up into the uh to the base of mikdash so there, there was this dividing line between what was in the Kodesh over the Azara and what was in the Chol, what was in the, um, uh, uh, over the non-sanctified area on the Temple Mount itself. And so those, those lines, that line was uh, uh, delineated by small piece of wood by sort of like a, a demarcation. And um, it had four rooms coming off of it. Rashi paspasim mavdila mekodeshachol, and these small ledges or pieces of wood would um, uh, separate between the holy area and the non-sanctified area. Umayim mishamshes, and what were these rooms for? So it start the mission over there starts off with the southwestern room. So ma'rov is the right, the southwestern room. He hoisa lishkas tlei akarban. The lambs for carbon were in there. So whereas in the mission in Tamid said it was the northwestern room, here it says it's the southwestern room and it starts there as well, going counterclockwise. And now we're on Tazayin Amin Aleph, the um, 16A at the top. Droimus Mizrachis and the southwest, southeastern room, which is number two in this image. Uh, um, uh, that was the bureau, the chamber that they would use for making uh, the lechem upon him, Mizrachis Safinis, and the northeastern one, uh, uh, moving along counterclockwise. Bagunzu Beis Chashmonai Avni Mizbeach, 
Shashika Tamache Avi Kachavim. The um, northeastern room was a room that they had placed the um, stones that they had to take from the destroyed um, um, Mizbeach because the the Greeks, when they came in, they they uh, worshipped idols on the, on it, and they, it became defiled, and they had to take it apart. And so those uh, sanctified and defiled stones would be uh, were stored in that. At northeastern room, and Safinus Marav is the northwestern room. That had an entrance from there to the uh, to the mikvah. Okay, so now we have the uh, Beis Hamikdash. Everybody agrees that was on the uh, uh, northern side of the Beis Hamikdash on the upper uh, floor. Uh, however, what those rooms and everybody agrees of four rooms, but what the four rooms served and uh, uh, and where they were. Um, is is a contradictory between the two Mishnayos. Amar Avuna Mantana Midas Rabbi Lezeb Yaakov. So uh, he says, okay, it's true. However, this is the opinion of Rabbi Lezeb Yaakov. And as we'll prove from other Mishnayos that the opinion of Rabbi Lezeb Yaakov about the uh, the order and, and the the structure of the Beis HaMikdash was different. And this Mishnah is the opinion of Rebbe Yaakov. And how do we know that it's Rebbe Yaakov? As we'll be able to prove that all of the Mishnayos there are really the opinion of Rebbe Um And 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 as we said earlier, the Rabbi Shimon Isha Mitzvah is the opinion of Masav Um So for this, we're going to need the uh, the next. Um, Room, so the Beis Hamikdash itself uh, ha- was the um, was like a T-shaped structure uh, with the uh, the ulam the the and the heichal the antechamber. They were they came off of with uh, uh, um, twelve stairs coming off of the azara, the courtyard, going into the az the the uh, ulam. Uh, the was the azara. Which, according to uh, Rabbi Yisrael Yaakov, also had a, a one ama platform from the Ezra Yisrael, which was where the eleven ama that Bnei Yisrael were allowed on the uh, right at the entrance, coming in from the east. But before that was a was a large courtyard, uh, which was called the Ezra uh, uh, the and the women's uh, uh, courtyard, and that was 135 by 135 ama. And in there, there were four rooms, and those four rooms uh, um, also like sort of uh, chambers coming off of the courtyard. And what those four rooms uh, were used for also going to be in uh, uh, um, the um, or discussion, and Rabbi Lezebi Yaakov is going to be the opinion here. So Rabbi Lezebi Yaakov, how do we know? That now we learned, Esos Nashim, Erech, the, 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 the women's courtyard was 135 by 135 ama. And in the four corners, it had four rooms, chambers uh, uh, that had functions. And what were they used for? So So again, we're coming in from the east into the courtyard, and this turning left immediately to the to the uh, um, south side, he has the lishkas and nazir. That was the nazir's chambers, and the nazir is someone who takes a vow not to um, cut his hair, become tummy, drink anything uh, wine, or have anything to, uh, that comes from grape. And uh, the nazir at the end would have to shave his hair. So sham nazir mevashlem es shlameim. That's where they would they would cook their shlamim, their offering at the end of their uh, nazir's. Uh, term umegalchen uh, shamsaaran, and they would cut their hair umeshalchen tachasadud, and they would burn the hair underneath the uh, pot cooking the meat. So that's where the nazir's process was done. Um, however, if they when you come in from the east and you turn right up uh, to the north room, mizrachis tzafonis he aisalishkas dir haetzim. That's where they had the wood piles. At Shasham Kahanabali, Mumim Vir Kahanim, who had a blemish, 
And as we learned in this week's parsha, someone made a, a coin with a, a with a mum cannot do the avoda, cannot do the service. So what do they do in the Mesa Mikdash? So they would work in the wood uh, chamber to make sure that there is no wor- the wood's not wormy and make it uh, make sure choose the right pieces for the Mesa Mikdash. So Sham Anim Maslin Ma'itzim, they would check for worms on the on the um wood, Chakalecha Ish Bitalas, because if it has a worm, possibly you're not allowed to put it on the Mizbeh. Going along the um the uh, northern side to the to the northwestern side of the room, so the far right as you come in. Uh so he is a lishka samitsarite. That's where the uh, the chamber that was a chamber for people that had saras. Uh, somebody had a leprosy and saras is, uh, was not allowed to come in to the Azara. So they had this room that they would be able to go into and um, uh, uh, they would go into the mikvah there, even though they'd been to the mikvah already, they'd go into the mikvah there and be able to stick their fingers into the doorway where the coin would then be able to put their, uh, 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 the, um, uh, the, uh, spritzing on their thumbs as, uh, as the Pasuk says. Merav is the Romis. And the, the far left corner, which is the south, the uh, southwestern side, Rabbi Yaakov says, you know, I forgot what was in there. So we see the opinion of the Mishnah is Rabbi Lezabi Yaakov, and he's the one telling us what it is, because he tells us that on this one, I, I, I just don't remember what it was. And Abishol, Eimer and Abishol filled it in and said, that's where the wine and the oil was stored. And it was called the Bureau Beishemanya. The house of oil. In any case, so we have the opinion uh, of uh, Rav Lezim Yaakov as the Mishnah Midas, and indeed we see that he uh, authored the, that Mishnah as well, this Mishnah as well, because he tells us what the three rooms were used for, and only the fourth one he says he doesn't know, and Abishol fills that in. So with this, the Gemara is going to tell us it, it, this makes sense. Hachanami Mistabra, indeed. It is logical that Rabbi Lezbe Yaakov is opinion of Rabbi Yaakov. And for this, we're going to need a, a, a little bit of um, Im, uh, some, some of images and um, a, a review of some of the halachas that we saw earlier about the red heifer, about the paraduma, the heifer um And I want to thank uh, Daf Hachayim for all of these uh, wonderful graphics to help us understand. The Har Habayis, the Temple Mount is obviously being a hill, a mountain. Um, is um, has a, 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 a is elevated. The base Hamikdash itself, which you can see here, in as the uh, a tall building in the middle, T shape, that is uh, the tall. That is the uh, Kodesh and the Kodesh Hakadoshim and the Ulam. That's the highest point of the of the mountain. The mountain was built uh, on, on, there was a platform built on the top of the mountain that was 500 ama by 500 ama. Um, that had uh, a cer- the uh, structure itself of the, ba- of the courtyard of the Beis HaMikdash um, was, was off to its side and, and, and they led to the Kodesh HaKadosh. The, uh, the next hill was Harazesim, um, to the east. Um, that's Harazesim, the uh, Mount of Olives. And on Harazesim is where they would burn the uh, Paraduma. They would do the Paraduma. However, the coin who was doing that um, would, would spritz, would need to spritz Nechach Pnei Almeid towards the opening of the, uh, of the Kodesh, of the, of the Beis HaMikdash itself. Now, in order to be able to do that, um, he, would, the, he would have to be at the same height, essentially, uh, as the opening of the Kodesh. And as we will see, each one of these parts, the Kodesh and the Azara and the, and the Harabais, they were elevated by various uh, stairs, which brought it to a height uh, elevation, which make it um, difficult to be able to see over some of the walls and into the, uh, into the Kodesh. So what was needed was that there would be a uh, uh, doorways that you could that he could see from 
temple from Arazes and Mount Olives through those doorways to the Kodesh. And that's what's going to be explained here. As you remember, these bridges were built from the, uh, from the uh, Azara to the other hillside, and it cost a lot of money. And they, uh, we saw um, uh, uh, previously that the Gemara said that, that the Kahanim Gedolim would not use the previous bridges. They would tear it down and rebuild it at a great expense because they wanted to have the mitzvah and, uh, of, of having built it itself. So the structure here that we're looking at is the um, a, a, a side view. And we have the, the uh, from the uh, Harabayas, from the Temple Mount, which was this huge platform uh, on, top of the, uh, on top of the mountain, what, there was a uh, 12 step, each step a half ama that went up to the Ezus Nashim, the first courtyard, which was 135 by 135, as we just learned. So we have a, a six ama elevation. From there, at the end of the 135 ama was a 15 step entrance into the uh, Azara where the, where the Mizbeach was. So we have a 15 step, at, which is seven and a half amas. So we're already at 13 and a half amas elevated from the, uh, uh, from the um, uh, platform, from the Harabayas to where the Mizbeach was. Additionally, there was six uh, more ama or 12 steps going into the ulam, into the uh, antechamber, which was into the uh, Kodesh. So uh, that brings us to 19 and a half amas. Now, what we know is that, as the, as the Mishnah is going to tell us, every one of the doorways in the, uh, in the um, structures of the Beis HaMikdash were 20 amos high. So if the first door is at uh, 20 amos and uh, the, the rest of the um, doors are at 20 amos and the total elevation of all these um, higher points or, uh, or platforms, all, all these stairs reaches to 19 and a half amos. So from the top of the doorway, which is at 20 amas, there's a half ama where the coin looking from the other, from the, uh, from uh, uh, Mount Olives, from the other side, would be able to look through and see the opening of the Beis HaMikdash. And that's, a, and that's enough to spritz. However, according to Rebbe Yaakov, there was another one ama elevation. And this was due to Rebbe Yaakov saying that as soon as you enter the, the uh, uh, Azara, Right? We saw that it was, it was facing the Mizbeach. So when he did so, he would enter um, at uh, coming from east to west. And when he would come from east to west, he would see the Mizbeach on, uh, right, straight ahead uh, towards the left because the Mizbeach was on the, uh, on the southern side of the, uh, of the uh, courtyard. However, the first 11 Amma, when as soon as on this eastern side, as soon as he would come in, was called Ezra's Israel, and there was a, a full ama elevation uh, to where the rest of the service was done, where the, where where non kohanim were not allowed. So now, if that's so, that we're already at twenty and a half um, elevation to get into the opening, and the coin would not be able to see from across. And so Rabbi Lezmi Yaakov says that they needed to have a short wall in the courtyard, in the uh, temple mount, so that he wouldn't be able to see, because he couldn't see through the door uh, because it, it was too high. Rather, he would have to see over the doorway. And uh, this is the um, uh, need, this is based on Rebbe Yaakov's need of the additional one ama elevation. Again, there's 12 stairs, so six ama elevation from the temple mount to the uh, to the uh, first courtyard, a, a 15 stair or seven and a half elevation from uh, uh, the first courtyard to the second courtyard. So we had 13 and a half ama. It was an 11 ama uh, area that B'nai Yisrael could be, the non kohanim could be, and then another ama elevation, so we're at 14 and a half, and then 12 stairs or 11 or, or, or six ama from 
uh, from the uh, Azara where this with the uh, outer Mizbeach was to go into the inner chambers 21 Amma uh, or 20 and a half Amma. That being the case, the 20 Amma doorway on the Temple Mount would not be would be too low uh, to be able to see the bottom of the doorway of the entrance. And that's really what we're looking for in, in, this, in this case for a Yaakov. And that's what the Gemara is gonna slowly show um, uh, these opinions in order to be able to, un to see that the Kohen who was on the other ma Temple Mount would be able to look over the doorway through uh, at the, of, the temple, of the Temple Mount and then through the doorways of the first courtyard, second courtyard, and into the doorway of the Kodesh itself. So let's begin. Tanan, um, we learned, Kolak Salam Shahayusham, all the walls that were in the, uh, the structures of the Beis Hamikdash, Hayikavayim, were very tall walls. Chutz Mikaisam Mizrahi, besides for the easternmost wall of the um, uh, of the Temple Mount. Shakain Aserfis Apara, because the Kain who was uh, burning the Paraduma and he needed to be able to be on the next hillside across, would have to be able to see um, from the uh, from the Mount of Olives over the the uh, initial wall and in through the doorways to the Kodesh. Shakain Aserfis Apara, Aimid Bahara Mishcha. He would be on the anointment mountain, meaning the Olive Mountain. Umechavin, and he would be uh, 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 intentional and 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 lined up. to be able to see the opening of the hechel of the of the beis hamikdash. B'shas hazadam when he was spritzing the blood of the uh, uh, red heifer. Utanan. We also learned the Mishnah that said kol apsachem shayin All doorways that they had in the beis hamikdash were very tall. Gavayim esrim ama. They were 20 amma high, approximately 30 feet. Verachbaneser, and they were 10 or 15 feet, 10 amma, 15 feet wide. Otanan. And we also have a Mishnah that tells us, Lefnimi menosuri. So in the uh, in the structure of the outline of the uh, uh, of the uh, Temple Mount, you have the Temple Mount. And inside the Temple Mount, there was a sori, a low lattice-like um, uh, perimeter around the base of to make sure that no one that's tame goes beyond that. Utanan lefnima min achel. And in front of that was a chel. Eser amas, ten amas. Ushtem esre ama malas, and there were 12 stairs coming up. Hayusham, these 12 stairs that would come up from the, um, uh, from the Temple Mount. Up until the, uh, up to this first courtyard, and um, every stair was a half amma, and the depth was a half amma. Okay, so what it means is that the height of these stairs was uh, uh, twelve stairs was six amma, and the depth of it was six amma. Then we got the courtyard. And from there, there were another uh, set of stairs, 15 stairs up. Fifteen stairs went up from the uh, as it's Nashim, from the first courtyard, the the women's courtyard, to the um, uh, the Azara, the where the service was done. Hayerdes mezasrales Nashim, which went from uh, the the upper courtyard, the Ezos Israel, to the Ezos Nashim. And again, these stairs also were a half amma by a half amma. So that again, if there are 15, that's seven and a half amma high. So we have a six amma elevation from the Temple Mount, a seven and a half amma elevation to the courtyard. But tonight we have another Mishnah that said, From the courtyard, in the courtyard, there was the Mizbeach. The Mizbeach was on the southern side in the center of the courtyard on the southern side. And between the the east, the western side of the Mizbeach and the eastern side of the entrance, uh, the entrance to the Beis HaMikdash. So if, when you come in again from the east, your head walk into the courtyard, uh, straight ahead to the left, to the, to the northern side is uh, the, the um, 
the sorry to the southern side uh, to your left is the uh, the mizbeach to the northern side is the slaughter area where they would check the animals and straight ahead would be the stairs going up to the Beis Hamikdash. Those stairs were situated in the 22 Amma, 22 uh, Amma, which is let's say 35 feet between the Mizbeach and the uh, opening of the Beis Hamikdash. Ushtem Esrei Malas, Ayushem. And in those 22 Amma, <clears throat> there were 12 stairs, also some platforms, some, some floor, but there were 12 stairs. And every stair was a half amma high. And a half amma deep. So again, six ammas of stairs high, uh, 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 high. So if we had 13 and a half amma, we're now at 19 and a half amma elevation from the platform of the uh, Harabayas, the Temple Mount, to the height of the entrance of the Beis HaMikdash. And that would be fine. So that would, since the doorways are 20, so the coin on the other side would be able to uh, see through the top of a doorway and through uh, uh, at the entrance of the Temple Mount, um, through the doorway at the entrance to the, as a snushim, the first courtyard, uh, through the doorway, the second courtyard, and would be able to see the first half amma, or let's say the first uh, uh, um, uh, 10 inches or so of the, of the um, entrance uh, to the to the Kodesh or to Nan, and we also learned Rabbi Lezer Yaakov Omer. Rabbi Lezer Yaakov says no. There was another piece of elevation there. There was another Amma elevation because uh, between the eleven Amma that the Kahanim were that the, the non Kahanim allowed to go, and the rest of the courtyard where only the Kahanim could do the service, they, between there there was another elevation. Ma'ala Hisasham. There was an, a, a, a platform, an elevation, the Gavaya Amma. It was an Amma high. And so there was an additional Amma height. The Ducha Nasanalel. And on top of that, there was a platform for the Kahanam to stand. The boy Shalashmalas, three steps tall. Shal Chatsi, Chatsi Amma, each step a half Amma. So there was a platform for the Kahanam to stand. On top of that platform, uh, uh, but uh, uh, sorry, with the may, uh, the 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 platform was for the Levim to sing the songs and play the music. But the, the idea is that there was a a, a a where the Kahanim did the service was one ama higher, a platform uh, um, above where the Bnei Yisrael stood. Now uh, that would now bring it to twenty one ama, and the coin, if there was a proper wall at the front of the Temple Mount. Even if there was had a twenty ama high doorway, the coin across could not see through the doorway to the opening of the uh, of the Beis Hamikdash because he would be too ele- he would hit the wall above it. So now we had the first Mishnah that we mentioned said all the walls were high, besides for the first wall. Now that makes sense according to Rabbi Lezer Yaakov because for him they needed the wall to be lower. At the opening, at the entrance, so that he would be able to see above the wall, and that's why he needed a low wall right when you start. Whereas the rest of the uh, the opinion, the the other opinion would be that since it was only nineteen and a half amas, you didn't you could have a fully a full height wall at the Temple Mount opening. The twenty amma doorway would be sufficient. So Bishlam of Lezav Yaakov Hainu, he if it's Rav Lezav Yaakov Hainu the Ichsile Pischa, then it would be. Uh, the, the problem, the, uh, the, the first doorway, even 20 amas high, would be too low. And he wouldn't be able to see through. And therefore, he needed a short wall at the opening uh, of the Temple Mount. Eli Amas Rabbanan. But according to Rabbanan, he would have a, 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 a gap of a, 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 an overlap of a half amma that he could see through. And therefore, that's the reason... Uh, uh, that's how we know that the that the uh, Mishnah earlier in Midos that said that all the walls were tall besides for the first wall at the entrance to the uh, to the um, Temple Mount that must be the opinion of Lezer Yaakov who had an additional elevated level um, uh, for the Kahanim to do the service. So this too is proof that the Mishnah in Midos is the opinion of Lezer Yaakov. Okay, so just to review, we have 
uh, the, the necessity of the Kohen who's in the, uh, on the uh, Mount of Olives to be able to spritz while be facing and seeing the opening to the Besamekdash. The opening of the Besamekdash is six amas higher than where the courtyard is, the Mizbeach is. And six, that's a seven and a half amma higher uh, than the lower courtyard. And that is seven, six amma higher than the Temple Mount, which is 19 and a half amma, sufficient that a 20 amma doorway the coin can see through from the top of the door, through the top of the doorway, through the middle of the next doorway, the lower end of the next doorway, and the bottom of the next doorway. At 19 and a half amma elevation within a 20 amma doorway is visible. Yet, Rebbe, the Mishnah said that the first wall was low so that the coin can see it. Whose opinion is that? That must be the opinion of Lezab Yaakov says that there was one more amma elevation in the, in the uh, um, uh, courtyard where the service was done, where the avodah was done, because there the, was an ama elevation between where the Yisraelim, B'nai Yisrael, allowed to stand, and the Kohanim would do the service, and that ama brings it above the 20 ama doorway, and therefore he needed to be able to see above the, the, um, the first wall in order to be able to see the doorway. Ravada Barava is going to say, no, actually, Perhaps there's another protrusion, another blockage, uh, and uh, that would have blocked the to look through the doorways, and that's why he needed to be able to see over the wall. What would be there? So uh, th- we mentioned that when you come into the base of Mikdash, uh, uh, when you sorry, you come into the courtyard, east the entrance was from the east, heading toward the west, and you would do so. The mizbeach would be down to the southern side. And you, if you look straight ahead, you'd see the doorway to the Beis HaMikdash. However, the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda is that the Mizbeach was smack in the middle of that courtyard. The ramp wasn't all the way down to the southern side, but rather it was in the middle. And that being the case, that would have blocked the doorway. And the reason he needed the, uh, the coin and the, uh, needed to be able to see over the wall is because the Mizbeach would have blocked it. Not because the not as a blockage from the from the door from the elevation, but from the mizbeach itself, which was in the center of the courtyard. Uh, so this is the second last line of fifteen uh, of sixteen a. Ravada Barava Amar Hamani Rabbi Yehuda. Perhaps this is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, the Tanner of Yehuda, because we have a bris that Rabbi Yehuda says a mizbeach mamutza. The mizbeach was in the center of the courtyard itself. Uh, um, uh, and it was uh, 32 amos. So, um, uh, so that would block the doorway. And it, it would block all the doorways because it was directly in the middle. So uh, it, it, the um, uh, the platform was uh, the 13 and a half amma, low, um, according to Lezav Yaakov, you now have 13 and a half amma down to the to the lower courtyard, and uh, um, the nine ammas of the uh, of the mizbeach itself. So if you have the nine ammas of the mizbeach itself, um, uh, that will bring you to 22 and a half amma, and that would block the doorway. Yeah, somebody has a question. Yeah, yeah, if something's on the altar, would it further block Correct. the view? But even even if there was nothing, it, there always was something, right? Because the center had an, a pile of ash, and there, there was um, there was also the fires go, running. But even a, a, a totally empty altar, the mezbah itself, being that it's uh, nine amas high, and the you have the platform that it was on is a tenth amma, and then the seven and a half uh, uh, amma stairs is. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the uh, um, 17 and a half, uh, 17 and a half amma, and then the six amma of the stairs to the Temple Mount is uh, um, uh, um, we're at 23 and uh, sorry, 22 and a half amma. So, either way, uh, even if the altar was completely empty, you wouldn't be able to see through, through the doorways, according to Rabbi Yehuda. 
So uh, you're right, Neil, if there was something on the Mizbeach, and there always was, so th that would even further uh, uh, obstruct the vision. But even the, the, the point of the Gemara is that even without anything, at the elevation um, of six Amma from the Temple Mount to the uh, courtyard, seven and a half to the, uh, to the next courtyard, another additional to the platform, plus the nine of the Mizbeach, you're at 22. There, that's going to obstruct the vision, the view, uh, um, because the Mizbeach is smack in the middle. Um, Eser Amas, Kenege Pisto there were, um, the, the, the Mizbeach was in the center point uh, against the, the um, opening of the courtyard. Yud Alef Amal and there were 11 Amma to the north. The Yud Alef Amal Ladorim, and 11 to its south. So that's the total size of the Mizbeach being 32. The, um, the, the top of the Mizbeach was 32 Amma. So you, you would have the 10 Amma at, facing the doorway itself. The doorway was 10 Amma. And then you'd have 11 on either side. That's, so in other words, it was completely obstructing the view of the doorway. Against, it was directly against the, the uh, holy um, and, and its door and its walls. Now, now, if you tell me it's Rabbi Yehuda, Mizbeach Be'emtza Azarim Yimishkach do we find indeed that Rabbi Yehuda said that uh, um, that the Mishnah Midas follows Rabbi Yehuda? So, what was Rabbi Debrava's suggestion? You know why he needed a lower wall and he couldn't just see through the doorway? Because the Mizbeach was, the altar was in, obstructing the view because it was directly in front of the doorway and it was at an elevation that would have blocked. So actually, it can't be because if we look at the Mishnah and Midos, it actually does not follow Rabbi Yudah's opinion and puts the Mizbeach um, at the southern side of the uh, at the southern side of the um, uh, the courtyard and not in the center like we just uh, uh, like we just offered. Um, as the the Mishnah there it delineates what all of the uh, width of the courtyard of the uh, courtyard with what it was what it did so in that delineation and we'll begin that today and we'll complete that tomorrow it tells us it indicates to us that no the Mizbeach was off to the southern side and it did not obstruct the entire doorway it blocked some of the doorway but not the entire doorway and the coin on the other hill would be able to see through the doorways if not for the elevation and the front wall. And that's why Rabbi Lezeb Yaakov needed the lower wall. And not, and it's not because the Mizbeach was the obstruction. So here we have the Mishnah. We'll go to begin that Mishnah. But tonight we learned. The, the length of the courtyard was 187. It was, however, 135 wide. Just as the previous courtyard was 135 by 135, this one was also 135 wide. Obviously, it's the same width. The length was longer. It was 187. So now we're going to look at the width, 135, and what filled that 135 amma width. So coming east, going west. So in the length, it was 187. Makim Drisas Ragli Yisrael, and it, it tells you what was what filled that space. A hundred, the the place where the Bnei Yisrael were allowed to walk. Yud Aleph Amma, there was eleven Amma, uh, and according to Lezav Yaakov, there was a ledge from there, um, uh, one Amma high, and Makim Drisas Ragli Kahanim, Yud Aleph Amma, and then there was another eleven Amma uh, where the uh, up to the altar where the Kahanim only Kahanim can go. Mizbeach Shlosh Bishtayim. The altar itself, the Mizbeach was was 32. So we're now at 11, 11, 22, 32, we're at 54. And another 22 between the Mizbeach and the uh, and the Beis Mikdash itself. Uh, uh, which is uh, 74. And the Hechel and the Beis Mikdash itself, Kufama, was a uh, 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 hundred Amma. And behind the holies, uh, the holy holy, uh, meaning the, the Kodesh HaKadosh, behind the structure of the base of Mikdash itself until the end of the courtyard was another 11. Okay, so that's the 
that's the total 120, uh, 187 uh, of the length of the courtyard. What about the width of the courtyard? Minadorim Litzafim, counting from the southern side. So as you walk in from east to west, you look to the uh, to your left, down to the southern side of the uh, of, of, of the courtyard, and it was 135 amma meya What was there? Hakevesh. You had the ramp. The ramp itself um, was 30 amas, and the top of the mizbeach was 32 amas. Uh, so the ramp plus the mizbeach, vam mizbeach, shishu That's a total of 62 amma. The ramp plus the mizbeach. That's about 100, you're close to 100 feet. Then there was a, a gap of eight ama, which would face the opening of the uh, of the uh, uh, temple of the Beis Hamikdash, and that was open platform leading up to the 24 ama, where, where they have where they, they had rings that were essentially half rings to hold animals down as they shechted them. Ches amas makamatabas. There was a total of uh, 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 sorry, eight, that was eight amas of the gap. Makamatabais esamarba, and where the those rings itself were for keeping the animals down so that they could shecht it were twenty four amas. Menavatabais will show chones arba amas, a four ama gap, and then there were the tables for the uh, for for taking care of the animals uh, of the carcasses so for the shechting after shechting. Menashul chones ulanan nasim. There was also another gap, and. Uh, 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 the uh, the tables themselves were four amas. There was a menal shachanas uh, anasin abba amas. Then there was a gap of four amas and menal anasim lakoisel ches amas. And the the uh, between the nanasim and the uh, wall were ten amas. The nanasim were these these pillars that had hooks on it or beams that had hooks on it where they would hang the animals in order to um, skin them. So this is the beginning of the question or the proof. That uh, the the mizbeach could not have been in the center, but rather the south. Um, tomorrow we'll continue with this count of the um, uh, of the width of the mizbeach, what was in there, and show that indeed the mizbeach was not in the center, like uh, Rabbi Yehuda, in, in, according to this Mishnah in Midas. Wishing you a great day.